In this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, some data from Zillow. It's a website with housing data. So I have a link here, zillow.com slash research slash data. So I'll go to that website just to sort of show you where I got it from. So here's zillow.com slash research slash data. Uh, and so we can go down to home listings and sales. And I have a couple different choices here. So I'm going to go with the, the raw numerical data for monthly home sales. And then I'm going to change that to state. Um, and normally, if I click on download, I'm going to get this uh, file that comes to my browser. But what I really wanted was the link that that goes to. And so if I uh, copy the link address from that download button, that is the URL of the file. So that's where that's where this came from right here. So I can actually just show you that I can paste that in here uh, from the copy that I just made. All right, so now that we've got a data source, I'm going to insert, uh, import pandas, and then I'm going to grab the data from the website as a CSV file, and I'm going to tell pandas not to hide any rows or columns. And then let's take a look at the head of the data frame that we got. So this is that CSV. It's got a bunch of rows and columns and a bunch of numerical data, and as we expected, some states and the number of housing sales in a given year and month. So in 2008, in March, uh, there were 23,000 home sales in California. So that sounds reasonable, I guess. Looks like for New York, there were no reported home sales. So maybe there's some missing data there. Now I'm going to take a look at the shape, and I see that it's 52 rows by 143 columns. So Basically, you've got these first three columns here, and then 143 year-month combinations. And for some reason, there's 52 rows, although I expected just 50 states. So if we take a look at the region names, that's the, the thing that is the state, and we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we see that District of Columbia and Puerto Rico are included as separate regions. So they're almost like states. And if we go down to the bottom, uh, we happen to see that District of, District of Columbia is included, as is Puerto Rico. Uh, and for some reason, there's a bunch of zeros here for Puerto Rico. So it seems a little unlikely that there were no home sales in Puerto Rico. So maybe we had NANs for New York and zeros for Puerto Rico. Um, those both probably need to have some follow-up activity. OK, so now the next thing that I uh, sort of recognize here is the fact that these three columns, these are like variables, and each row is almost uh, an observation, except for the fact that these columns, these are uh, not what we'd want for analysis. What we really want is the year as a column and the month as a column, and then the uh, sorry, not is that, the year and month as uh, separate variables. And here we're just having 140 columns of data as time series. That's not unusual, but it's not something that we'd want to proceed with for analysis. So what I'm going to use is this very cool idea of a tidy data set. And so it, you, what you want to end up with is every row is an observation and every column is a variable. And so pandas includes this handy feature called melt. And melt allows us to make that transformation. So I'm going to talk about this line here that I have. Uh, I'm going to store the output to a new um, variable called data frame, so df. Uh, and my original one is called df sales. I'm going to apply the pandas function called melt. And melt is looking for a couple uh, inputs. The first is our source. So this is the df sales. That's the data frame where we're getting the data from. And then the next argument is the variable, uh, the columns that we want to leave unchanged. So in our data set here, there are three columns that we're going to leave um, unchanged. And those will just be uh, these three here as a list. And the, the important thing to recognize is that even though in our original data set here, we had 52 rows because each one of these only appeared once. So there are, there's one row of Texas. And after we make our transformation, Texas is going to be duplicated. So the, the trade-off that we're making here is that some of the columns will have duplicate entries, and, uh, but we'll have a, a narrower data set. There's actually only a few variables that we care about, the region ID, the region name, the size rank, 
the year, the month, and then the count. And that count here is what is in the in the actual body of the data frame currently. So as I sort of just alluded to, we need a few new columns. So these are the columns we're leaving unchanged. And then we're going to have this turn into a, a column and then a separate column for the count. So this is the syntax here of the melt command as it takes the source data frame, the columns we're leaving unchanged, and the new columns that we're going to create based on the old columns, and then a new column based on the body of the data frame. So this is such a standard problem to solve that Pandas made it part of a, a command that can be called generically, which is a pretty cool observation. All right, so I just ran that command, the pandas melt. And now let's look at the head of the data frame. So the top of it shows that we now have, as expected, the, the columns that did not change, and a new column, which is the year month. So that's the th column that we had here. And then another new column called count, which was the body here. So that is the output of the melt command. If we look at how big the output of data frame is, it's a wildly different shape. Remember we had 52 rows and 143 columns, and now we have 7,200 rows and only five columns. So that's a big change in the sort of aspect ratio of our data frame. Now you might be wondering, well, why did you put these two in the same column? Um, the answer to that is that's what we started with. So it's sort of the, the first transformation, but just to be uh, totally consistent with the tidy data structure, we'd actually want to split that column into two separate variables. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take this year month and make it into a year column and a month column. It's a pretty uh, straightforward process there because we see that it's a year separated by a dash and then a month. So all I'm going to do is split that the entries in that column by the, uh, the dash, the hyphen. And then if I do that, what I get back is this series structure, and the series is a list of two values. So it might look like we, we didn't get what we wanted because we really wanted two columns of data, but there's this handy expand argument that we can pass to the split. And then what it does is it splits that list into two columns as a data frame. So now we're pretty excited because that's, that's almost what we wanted. We wanted a year column and a month column. But now we have to insert those two columns uh, into the original data frame here. So we have these uh, five columns, and we want to add two more columns where one of the new columns is the year and the other new column is the month. So we can do that by taking this output that we had, so the, the split columns, and then just putting that into uh, the new data frame here. I should take this out. So now when I look at the data frame head, now we've got the, uh, the columns we wanted, so the region ID, the region name, and there's this extra column of year month because it's redundant with the two columns we inserted. So we don't need the year month column anymore, so we can just drop it, um, and we're gonna use in place equals true so that we don't have to uh, create a new variable. Now when we look at that data frame, it is exactly what uh, we wanted, where every column is a variable and every row is an observation. And if we look at the, the tail of that data frame, it's the, the things that we're expecting, uh, and the shape of that is 7,200 rows by six columns. 